This PowerPoint is on the cell, which is the basic unit of life. The competency covered is 4A, so you will learn to differentiate among plant and animal cells and eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. That includes the functions of all of the cell organelles and determining what is a eukaryote and a prokaryote. You'll be able to identify the cell structures and detail their functions. Cells are the basic unit of all life on Earth. Everything is made of cells. All living things are made of cells. All cells contain cytoplasm and a cell membrane. And there are two types of cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are usually small, simple cells. Examples would be bacteria and microbes. They don't have a nucleus. That's the main difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. You can see from that picture at the bottom, the DNA of this bacterial cell is that red swirly stuff in the middle. So there's no nucleus in that cell at all. The DNA just floats freely in the cytoplasm. Some structures that are found in prokaryotic cells are cilia, flagella, and pili. Those help move the bacterial cell through whatever fluid it's in. Um, Bacteria and microbes, again, are the prokaryotes that we're going to be discussing in this unit. You can see on this picture, the DNA would be that yellow swirl in the middle of that cell. The flagella would be the long green structures. Those are the whip-like tails. And then cilia and pili would be found on the sides. These on this bacterial cell are cilia. So those are little hairs that help it move through whatever fluid it's in. Eukaryotes, in contrast to prokaryotes, are usually a little bit larger and more complex. So they contain a nucleus, which is the main difference, and they have membrane-bound organelles. That means they have organelles or small organs within the cell that are encapsulated in a membrane. Eukaryotes include animals, plants, and protists, which are some single-celled organisms. This slide just shows you the differences between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. So the main thing that you'll be looking for is the nucleus, which the prokaryote does not have. This is an animal cell in this slide, which would not have a cell wall. The prokaryotic cell at the bottom of this slide has a cell wall, and it's also got that flagellum on there. The first cell structure that we're going to discuss would be the cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is just the fluid surrounding the nucleus. The nucleus is not considered to be part of the cytoplasm. It's considered to be a completely separate thing. So this is like a jelly-like substance found inside the cell membrane that surrounds all the organelles. And all of the cell's metabolic processes take place. So everything that the cell needs to do in order to live and carry out whatever processes its purpose is, uh, is going to take place in that cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is found in all types of cells. It doesn't matter if it's prokaryote, eukaryote, animal, plant, whatever. Cytoplasm is going to be there. The cell membrane can also be called the plasma membrane or the phospholipid bilayer, and it controls what enters and leaves the cell. That picture at the bottom is just a small portion of what the cell membrane actually looks like close up. Uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, the things that are going to pass through the cell membrane and how that happens later on in this unit. When we break down the term phospholipid bilayer, Phospholipid means the classification of the lipid, the type of lipid that it is. Bilayer just means two layers. So the cell membrane is made of two layers of lipids with proteins embedded. So the picture on the right shows the individual phospholipid molecule, and that's one of the lipids that we talked about in Unit 1. So it looks like a little head with two tails coming off of it. The picture on the left shows those that phospholipid bilayer, and those big chunks are the proteins that are embedded. So those proteins have a specific purpose, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The nucleus in eukaryotic cells, that's the control center of the cell. That's where all the 
instructions come from. So it contains a nucleolus in the picture at the bottom. The nucleolus would be that black center. The nucleolus is responsible for production of proteins. Uh, the nucleus also contains the DNA in the form of nucleic acids. And it also has the nuclear envelope with pores in it to allow RNA to pass through. So that dark section in the middle, that would be the nucleolus. That purple section is where the DNA or the chromatin is going to be found. And then that red layer on the outside is the nuclear envelope. So those holes there are going to allow messages to come in and out of the nucleus. Ribosomes can either be free-floating in the cell or attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The ribosome is where proteins are actually made, so they're the site of protein synthesis. And if the ribosome stops working, then proteins would not be made by the cell. And remember when we did unit one, we talked about how important proteins are. So if proteins cannot be made, then the cell is not going to be able to perform its function properly. The Golgi body is next, and that's going to be a stack of flat membrane sacs that sort and package proteins. Uh, so if you are looking at a job description, if we're making an analogy, which we will do later on in this unit, uh, its job description would be a packer and transportation specialist. Uh, so it's going to take those proteins that are made on the ribosomes and it's going to package them in those little vesicles. So if you look at the top right hand side, you can see those circles coming off of the Golgi body. Those are vesicles. So those are going to actually package them up like little boxes and ship them to wherever they need to go. The mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell. It's found in both plant and animal cells, and sugars are changed into energy that the cell can use. Energy is transformed from sugar and is made into ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. We'll learn more about that in the next unit when we get to cellular respiration. Cells that require energy have mitochondria. So all energy that's produced by the cell that is required for the me metabolic process to take place are made in the mitochondria. Muscle cells have large quantities of mitochondria because they require energy to move. So for example, the heart muscles have lots of mitochondria because they're constantly moving. If the mitochondria stops, then the cell would not be able to produce ATP. Vacuoles in animal cells are very small, and they're used for storage tanks, so for storing water, salt, protein, sugar, and wastes. The central vacuole in plants is usually the one that's going to be mentioned on the state test. So the plant cells have this large central vacuole, and you can see it in the bottom right-hand corner. That would be like the big watery structure looking in the middle. Uh, it maintains internal water pressure, and it allows plants to hold up heavy organs like stems and leaves. One reason that that central vacuole is so important is because plants have a cell wall. So the cell wall provides structure and support for the plant cell, but if that vacuole is not there to provide that internal water pressure, then the cell wall would collapse. Chloroplasts are found in photosynthetic organisms, so any organism, any plant or animal that makes energy from the sun has chloroplasts. It can capture energy from the sun to make food, so it captures light energy and changes it into sugar, which is then used by the mitochondria to make ATP. And we'll, again, we'll discuss that some more when we get to the next unit. If the chloroplast is damaged, the cell cannot capture energy from the sun to make food. Sugars made by the chloroplast are turned into ATP. Um, this picture at the bottom is pretty standard on the state tests, so you want to be able to make sure that you can identify that as a plant cell. So the question might read something like, um, which structures listed would denote that this is a plant cell? So those structures would be the cell wall, the vacuole, and the chloroplast. 
This is another depiction of a plant cell. Again, these uh, drawings can be very different uh, from when you see them. So the nucleus makes it a eukaryote. The cell wall makes it a plant cell and also that central vacuole. So you can see that big blank space in the middle would be the central vacuole. The cell wall is surrounding the outside of that cell. And then the nucleus would be in the top left-hand corner of the cell. Looks kind of like an eyeball staring out at you. Then we have plant and animal cells. So the animal cell is going to be on the left. It contains a nucleus, cytoplasm, and a cell membrane. The cell membrane is also found in plant cells, um, but it is underneath that cell wall. So if you look at the right-hand uh, cell, you can see those organelles that are found only in plants, and that would be the chloroplast, the central vacuole, and the cell wall. 